Hey there, we're gonna do a satsang for today. Um, so we'll just sit uh, in silence for a little bit and then we'll see what's going on. Nice black tea with cardamom. So good.
The reason you don't want to let life in is because you're scared of your feelings. You're running from sensation. You believe that you are your feelings. But your feelings are appearing in you. Life is your feelings, and you are all of life. You're either chasing feelings that you think you want or you're running from feelings that you don't want. What if you just let them in? Boredom, grief, hatred, discontent, lack. What are you so afraid of? Why are you running from life? What you are cannot be touched by the coming and going of feelings and sensations. What you are is the sadness. But because sadness comes and goes, it's not the totality of who you are. Something else is here. Something else something still something spacious something open something that doesn't come and go. Something that isn't afraid to be here. Something that isn't afraid to be crushed.
something that is not poor or rich, loved or rejected, happy or sad. The focus on um, on feelings can be good because it's important to feel. It's important to feel. But your relationship to those feelings determines how much of life, how much of your awakening you're letting in. Oftentimes people will meet their greatest fear. They'll get a disease will go bankrupt, their partner will leave them, their child will die. For so long, the person spent their life avoiding this inevitable event of loss, loss of health, loss of a loved one, loss of a structure, loss of a false sense of security. For so long, the person avoided this. And when it happens, it can be an extraordinary relief to finally meet your greatest fear, your worst nightmare, your most terrible, tragic, Reverie. I think reveries actually has a positive connotation, but your your worst um, nightmare. When we meet the thing we're running from, the thing we're so afraid of. An immense freedom and incredible liberation is available and accessible because we're no longer interacting with the world through the dream, through the false sense of control, this lie, this idea that you can stop life from experiencing you. So sometimes the thing that we're afraid of most can be an extraordinary um, act of grace on our path. Sometimes standing firmly rooted in the thing that we're most afraid of can be the only way forward. Forward into the realization that what you are is untouched and unaffected and unmoved by these apparent movements in the illusion of time.
And if you hear what I'm saying, if it's resonating, this message, if it's resonating, then you're experiencing the dying off of the dream. And so in that moment of the loss of the job or the partner or the child or the money or the housing situation or the health or the beauty, in that moment of loss, the dreams breaking apart, the dream of your image of who you think you are, the dream of where you think you're going, the dream that you have a sense of control over whether or not something goes or stays. In that moment, that's dying. And the truth is very raw, very available, very present. And yeah, it can be intense. It can be really, really rough. But underneath that, or in that, um, there's something more, something alive, something vibrant, something free, something true, something that's been searched for all along. It's, it's always been had. It's always been there, quiet, silent, watching in the background. <laughs> 